Okay, so in this video, we're going to do some examples uh, of completing the square. As promised, now that we've got this, this concept under our belts and understand it on a very deep level and are super comfortable with it, uh, we're, going to, we're going to test it out and do a, a couple of examples. Um, I've, I've got five here that we're going to do, um, because I think any more than that is going to be a little bit uh, redundant and, and boring. But I've picked them to be, hopefully, uh, cover all the cases that we need. Two out of the first four have a positive A value, and the other two have a negative A value. And then the last one we're just going to make up as we go, because I think it's really important to show that this actually works for, for every quadratic. Uh, if you just saw the first four, you might think, okay, you know, these are kind of cherry-picked to be nice, and, and they are. Um, so the last one will be messy and, and not necessarily have... Uh, probably not have integer uh, values of h and k, but it's it's important to see that it, it, you actually can do this for any quadratic. So, okay, first one. We have here y is equal to 2x squared minus 4x plus 5. So our a value is 2, our b value is negative 4. Of course, the c value is 5, although we don't, we don't really care about that. We're just interested in the, the b and the a, because the sneaky zero term, b squared over 4a, that we're going to be adding and subtracting, is uh, completely determined by the, the b and the a. So this is uh, negative 4, of course, squared over 4 times 2, which is 16 over 8, which is 2. So we are going to be adding and subtracting 2 from this equation. We're going to be getting this thing equal to 2x squared minus 4x plus 2 plus 5 minus 2. And there, let me fill out that x a little bit more. There is the, the adding and subtracting. There is the sneaky the sneaky 0. So this, of course, becomes the, the 5 minus 2 is going to become plus 3. And this, this is our perfect square term. This is going to become the square root of 2x squared. And then this is something we didn't mention explicitly in the in the derivation video. But if, if you look, it actually, it actually, um, is, is kind of implied there. This is one of the things that, that uh, throws people off a little bit. It's not going to be plus. In, in the, in the uh, derivation video, we saw that we were going to end up with square root of a times x plus b over 2 times the square root of a squared plus uh, c minus b squared over 4a at this step. And this, this included the possibility that b could be negative, right? If b is negative, we're going to be subtracting something there. This trips people up a lot, but, but it shouldn't. Um, if you think about this, it, it totally makes sense. So, so we're subtracting here. Uh, this is going to be, this is going to be uh, b over the square root of uh, a times 2. The square root of a is root 2, and 2 is just 2, and b is, b is negative 4. So this is going to be minus 4 over the square root of 2 times 2 squared plus 3. And that, just to really, really emphasize this, because it's the first time we're doing it, um, this this is the the b. This is the plus b. And then underneath there, we have the, we have the uh, square root of a, which is the square root of a, and then we have the the two, which is just the two. So this this is a complete correspondence with with uh, what we did in, in the concept video, and of course, of course we can we net then get. I'll just do this to be really really careful, really step by step. We're going to get root two times x minus, and then the four will cancel with the two, and we'll get two over root two squared plus three, and two over root two is of course just root two. So this becomes root two x. Um, I'm getting a little bit ahead. Let me let me do it really, really carefully and step by step, at least the first time. Root 2x minus root 2, because it cancels with the 2. Uh, the root 2 cancels with the root 2 on the bottom, plus 3. And now, now I can factor out that root 2 and get x minus 1 squared plus 3, which is, of course, root 2 squared times x minus 1 squared plus 3, which is 2 x minus 1 squared plus 3. So now if I want to if I want to graph this this quadratic it's it's pretty easy to find it's pretty easy to find the vertex let me maybe that's what I'll do in orange. Um, the vertex of this quadratic is going to occur at 1 and 3 right this is the the H the H is 1 and remember in our in our uh, let me do that in orange as well. In our vertex form of a quadratic, we have y is equal to a x minus h squared plus k. So the k is easy to find; it's just it's just k. But we're not. It, it's it's a lot of people uh, make the mistake 
this is, this is one of the more common ones, of saying that this, this uh, x-coordinate would be negative 1, because I see a negative 1 in the brackets with the x. It's actually not that. It's, it's, the, it's the positive 1, right? Because we're subtracting 1. If we, had, if we had 2 times x plus 1 squared plus 3, then that would be 2 times x minus negative 1 squared plus 3. And then, then the, the uh, h, the x-coordinate of the vertex, would be, would be here, negative 1. Um, but, and so this, this is an important subtlety to keep in mind. But because, because we got uh, x minus 1 squared, we get, a vertex at, we get a vertex at 1 and 3, and so that is the vertex of our parabola, and then we can, we can graph it. So that's, I don't know why that got all wavy. There we go. It's slightly better, and that's a little bit better. Um, of course, to fully graph this thing, we want to, we want to also know the roots, but, but that's what we use factored form for. With completing a square, we're doing it, of course, to find the vertex form. So that that takes care of it. We get the vertex. We get the vertex. What is this color that I'm using now? We get the vertex at one three. Okay. Uh, second one. Now we have we have uh, y is equal to three x squared plus twelve x plus five. I hope I thought I made this one negative. I, I hope uh, I hope it's uh, uh, two. The, the second, the third, and fourth one are are negative. I'm pretty sure they are. If not, we'll make up a negative one. Um, so we get we get here a is equal to three, b is equal to twelve, and so uh, b squared b squared over four a is equal to twelve squared over four times three. Since four times three is twelve, this is just going to be twelve. So we're going to be adding and subtracting twelve to this, and uh, to and, and from. So we get we get three x squared plus 12x, plus 12, plus 5, minus 12. Again, adding and subtracting the, the uh, b squared over 4a. And this gives us this one. We can, we can do it a couple ways. We could, we could uh, factor out a 3, uh, but it's, it's not necessary here. We can just say that this is going to be, because I'd like to keep it consistent with the, the exact way we did it in the video, I'm going to say this is root 3 times x plus the square root of 12 squared. That, that's the perfect square term that we, that we saw in the video. Um, great practice if you want, though. You can factor out the 3 and do it that way. Um, and then, and then uh, this is going to be minus. I'm subtracting 12 from 5, so I get negative 7. And then this, again, we'll do it very step by step. This is root 3x plus square root of 12 is the square root of 3 times 4 squared minus 7, which is going to be square root of 3x plus 2 times the square root of 3. After I, I square that, I take, because this is, this is root 3 times root 4, of course, using our, our uh, uh, exponent rules, our, our radical rules, squared minus 7. And this is, now, I factor out the root 3. I get x plus 2 squared minus 7. And then last step, this just becomes 3x plus 2 squared minus 7. So again, I can now I can now graph this thing because I think it's it's a nice way to wrap these up by actually seeing uh, what we got out of this. I can see that th this thing has its vertex, and I have to let me move this up a little bit actually because I'm going to run out of space if I want to make it to scale. Uh, this is going to have let me extend the the axes down a bit. This is going to have its vertex at negative two and. Uh, negative seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, well, wow, seven. There we go. I made it just just low enough. That's negative seven. So that is the vertex, and the thing goes up. It goes up like like this. And again, that's that's really ugly, but it doesn't matter. Um, and so again, this is just because because uh, this is a x minus h squared plus k. So this lets me know that the the k is negative seven, and the h is this is negative, negative 2, so the h is going to be negative 2 there. Okay, next one. Ah, here we go. Okay, finally, we've got, we've got one with a negative a. Uh, I knew I put one in here. So here we have, we have a is equal to negative 1, and b is equal to negative 6. And so now, because the a is negative, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop and factor it out. I'm going to stop and say this is negative x squared plus 6x plus 11. And then I'm going to deal with this, this one, plus 6x 
plus 11. And then just remember, that's very important to remember to, to multiply through by the negative again after, after I've dealt with this. Um, and this again gets us out of, out of factoring, just always factoring out the A from the first two terms, um, which, is, which is what they, they're always telling you to do um, in, in high school, and which just, just turns everyone's minds inside out and is, is totally unnecessary. This is, this is much simpler, cleaner way to do it, in, in my opinion, at least. So, okay, we have, we have x squared plus 6x plus 11, and now A is equal to 1 and b is equal to 6. So we get b squared over 4a is equal to 36 over 4, which is equal to which is equal to 9. So I'm going to add and subtract 9 from this. I get x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 11 minus 9. This is of course going to turn into 2, and this is this is x plus 3 squared. So that was that was nice. That was a nice one because it, this was a nice perfect square because the the uh, a value was a multiple of one and it was one after we factor out the negative. We're going to get a nice clean perfect square here. We don't have to do any factoring out of roots or anything. And then I add two to this, and then uh, last step I have to I have to multiply by negative one. So I get negative x plus three squared plus two is going to be it's going to be negative x plus 3 squared minus 2. And so now I can see, I can see that the, let me do this in again, orange, I can see that the vertex is at negative 3, negative 2. And this thing is downward facing. This is a downward facing quadratic. So, so it's going to, it's going to be a maximum. That is going to be the maximum value of this thing is negative 3 and negative 2. It's going to look, it's going to look something like this. Terrific. Okay. There we go. Um, and another negative one. I guess I saved them. Uh, I, thought, I thought I'd space these out, but I guess it doesn't matter. Um, here we go. Negative 2 is equal to a. So I get an a value of negative 2. I don't even know why I'm writing this. We're going to factor it out. So we're going we're gonna, to, before we do anything else, we're going to write this as negative 2x squared plus 16x plus 25. And now we're going to work with this. And just remember to, to uh, multiply by the negative 1 at the end. So we're looking at 2x squared plus 16x plus 25. And now we have an a value of 2 and a b value of 16. So b squared, b squared over 4a is going to be 16 squared over 4 times 2. And before I start doing, you might start getting scared because we have to do a 16 squared, um, which of course is not is not so hard to do. But we actually we actually don't need to do that here. We can write we can write this in its prime factorization. We can write 16 as 4 squared or 2 uh, to the power of 2 squared. This will be 4 squared over 4 times 2, uh, and the 4 squared is of course squared. Or I can write this as 4 to the power of 4 over 4 times 2 using my exponent laws, or because because 4 is equal to 2 squared, right? 4 is equal to 2 squared. I can write this as 2 squared squared over 2 squared times 2, which will be 2 to the power of, or sorry, that was 2, two squared uh, to the power of 4. There we go. Almost made a really silly mistake, which is 2 to the power of 8 over 2 to the power of 3, which is 2 to the power of 5, which is 32. So so just, and I'm not actually sure how much easier that was than just squaring the 16, but this is something that, that you should know you can do. You can always you can always break things down into prime factors and then do the canceling. Um, but there's there's another video on that. Just thought I'd just thought I'd uh, throw that in here as an example of, of when it can save you from uh, from doing something scary like squaring squaring 16. Um, okay, so so my my sneaky my sneaky zero term is b squared over 4a. So I'm going to re-express this as as 2x squared plus 16x plus 32 plus 25 minus 32. And this, of course, is negative 7. And this bit is going to be the square root of 2 times x plus the square root of 32 squared. And then, and then I'm subtracting the 7. And, and what is the square root of 32? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, again, express 32 in terms of its, its prime factorization. It is 2 to the 5. And that's a horrible 5. 2 to the 5 which I'm going to write as 2 to the 4 times 2 for the purposes of, of this. 
because then I can take I can square I can, or I take the square root of two to the four, right, and get and get two squared. Two to the four, if I take the square root, is going to be uh, two to the four. It's going to be two to the four to the one over two, which is going to be two squared. So I can write this as square root of two times x plus two root two, um, because uh, or sorry, four root two rather, four root two. Uh, let me do this step by step. I don't want. I don't want to confuse people. Sorry. We'll make this. We'll make this root two x plus the square root of of two to the four is eight, right? So uh, or two to the four is sixteen rather. So I'm I'm confusing myself here. Sixteen times two squared minus seven, which I can write as again being really 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 step by step. Root two x plus root 16 root 2 squared minus 7, which is, again, root 2. I can factor, I'll, I'll, now I'll skip a step because this is getting, it's getting kind of strange. Uh, x plus 4 squared minus 7. And that's just using the fact that that square root of 16 is 4. And last but not least, I square the root 2 and I get 2 times x plus 4 squared minus 7. And, and after all that, I can't forget that I factored out a negative one up here. So I have to multiply the whole thing. I have to multiply the whole thing by negative one and make this negative two x plus four squared plus seven. And again, now now I'll graph it. Um, and I'll, I'll just, because I have like no space here, I won't make this to scale, I'll just make it uh, um, so that we can see, see, so we can see uh, what, what the point of doing this was. Our vertex is at negative four and seven, and that's a max. So I'm just going to call this negative four and seven, and then that will be the maximum value. And this is this is totally not to scale, but uh, I already wrote in the five there, so I think this is a bit easier than than moving it down. And uh, the scale is not important. Okay, so last last but not least, um, I'm just going to make one up because these were all these were all cherry picked. I, I, I reverse engineered those to be nice and, and have integer values of h and k, but it's really important to see that we can we can do this for, for absolutely anything. So let's let's say y is equal to negative seven x squared plus two x minus nine. Just completely totally made up these these random numbers. So we're gonna get something messy, but we're going to get nevertheless we're going to get something. Um, we're going to get a, a completed square uh, quadratic, which we can then graph, we can find the vertex. We, we are going to get the vertex form of this. So again, because the a is negative, the first thing I'm going to do is factor out the negative 1 and make this 7x squared minus 2x plus 9. And then I'm going to work with that instead. 7x squared minus 2x plus 9. So I get an a value of 7 and a b value of negative 2. So I get my b squared over 4a term is negative 2 squared over 4 times 7. Negative 2 squared is 4, so that's going to cancel, and I'm just going to get a 1 over 7. That's my b squared over 4a. This is gross. It's, it's going to be a 1 over 7. And so I'm going to add and subtract 1 over 7 now. and make this 7x squared minus 2x plus 1 over 7 plus 9 minus 1 over 7. And this is, like I said, this is not going to be pretty. Right? I'm going to have to take square root of 7. I'm going to have to do some you know, common uh, denominator stuff. But it's okay to get fractions. I can, I can absolutely get fractions and even irrational. Um, and if you're, if you're interested in what exactly an irrational number is, um, we, have, we have videos on that. Please do go check it out. Um, but we're, we're, we're going to get something that looks like involving the square root of 7. And I can just, and people, people get uncomfortable about this. But the square root of 7 is an, an honest, uh, nat uh, real number. It is, it is the square root of a natural number, which is not a perfect square, so it's going to be irrational. Um, but we can just leave it like this, right? We don't, in, in high school, people are always panicking. They don't want to do this. You know, can we, we have to put it into a calculator, get a decimal. But to get out of a calculator is actually a decimal approximation. It's not the exact number. This is the exact number. There's nothing wrong with just writing the square root of 7 or square root of 3 or square root of any any number, which isn't a perfect square. Um, and that that is your answer. So, so because uh, I know a lot of people are going to be watching this getting uncomfortable. Um, this is actually totally kosher. We can, we can absolutely do this. Um, all right. So, so again, we have, we have this, this K value, which is nine minus one over seven. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, make a common denominator and express nine as 63 over seven minus one over seven here. 
So we're going to get this is 62 over 7, which is which is not a nice number. It's it's rational, but it's not an integer. But that's life sometimes. Um, and this this what is this going to be? Now we have to stop it and think for a second because we don't have perfect squares here. This is going to be same thing as we did in in the concept video. The square root of this, so square root of 7 times x minus because we have a negative b minus the the and let me keep the color coding consistent minus the square root of this what is the square root of 1 over 7 it's well let's let's do it on the side here it is the square root of 1 over 7 is the um, let me let me do this really step by step the square root of 1 over 7 is the square root of 1 over the square root of 7 using our exponents or, or radical rules which is 1 over the square root of 7 which because we we generally want to rationalize the denominator, right? We don't want radicals in the denominator. I'm going to multiply this by root 7 over root 7 to get root 7 over 7, which is the standard or canonical way of representing uh, uh, 1 over a, a, uh, the root of, an of a, a non-perfect uh, square. So, so if you have like uh, 1 over root 2 is one which comes up a lot in trig, we usually write this as root 2 over 2. After we, we multiply the top and bottom, we use a sneaky one. We've been using sneaky zeros here. We're going to use a sneaky one to write this as uh, 1 over root 2 times root 2 over 2, which is just 1 written in a sneaky way, which will be uh, root 2, uh, or that was root 2 over root 2. We're going to end up with root 2 over 2. So we do the same thing, and we're just going to write, we're going to write here uh, for, for the square root of uh, 1 over 7, we're going to write root 7 over 7, and this is squared. And then we're adding, uh, we already decided we're adding 62 over 7 here. Um, so, so, and then the next step, of course, is, uh, as always, we're going to factor out the coefficient of the x. We're going to make this root 7 times x, now minus 1 over 7 squared, plus, well, plus 62 over 7. When we square the square root of 7, we just get 7, x minus 1 over 7 squared, plus 60, 62 over 7. And so again, we really, really didn't need to panic, and because I know this is this is something that people um, almost don't want to accept. But we, we don't have to panic over the idea that we can we have a square root of seven in there. We can just write the square root of seven. That is a real number. The real numbers are complete. Um, although you don't need to know what that means right now. If you're interested, do go check out the, the video on that. Um, but we ended up we ended up squaring it again at the end anyway. So it, it actually didn't matter that that we had this irrational number. We, it would have been fine, absolutely fine, to leave an irrational number like root seven in our answer. As long as it wasn't in the denominator, we want to rationalize. But we, we didn't, it was all for naught. We didn't have to. We didn't have to worry about that anyway. We're gonna, we just squared it and wound up with, with a positive, with a, with a normal seven uh, anyway. But, um, and why am, I, why am I making Freudian slips and, and talking about positives? Because, because we have to multiply by this negative. I'm remembering that we have to, we factored out a negative. And this is, this is really, really easy to forget. So uh, be careful. Um, doing it this way makes it a lot easier to understand, makes it simpler. Um, and, and gets you out of that sort of uh, annoying mind-bendy stuff in, that, that comes from factoring out the A from the first two terms uh, that people really, really stumble over. But you have to remember to put in the negative. Always, always, always remember to put the negative back in at the end. And we get negative 7x minus 1 over 7 squared minus 62 over 7. And this lets us see where where the... And I'm not going to try to do this one to scale because it's it's uh, rational numbers. Um, this lets us see where where the uh, and actually although I'm going to move this up a little bit uh, where the vertex of this of this quadratic is. So the x coordinate the x coordinate is negative one over seven here. Or sorry, it's positive one over seven. I'm being really silly. It is positive one over seven because the h value is negative one over seven. Or the the h value. Got a got to wrap this up. I'm getting tired. The h value is 1 over 7, right? This is x minus h. So the h is 1 over 7. And then this is nowhere near close to scale. But way, way down at the bottom here, uh, we're going to get uh, negative 62 over 7. Um, and that is, these are the coordinates of the vertex. So, and this is upward facing because, because the a value is negative. It's negative 7. And, and that's it. That is that is it. So so hopefully um, you were following along and and had an easy time with all of these. And um, you know I, I always say you can never do too many practice problems. 
but if if you've got it, you know, at this point, uh, you've got it. So so uh, if you're gonna do any if you're gonna do any more practice on this again, I would suggest um, learning to make sure that you know how to derive it for yourself and that you could explain the formula to to somebody else. Um, because if you noticed all along, we've just been we've just been finding the a and the b and computing the b squared over four a. It's the exact same thing every time. And then just remembering little things like like putting a negative in here uh, inside the square term when it's when the b is negative and factoring out a negative at the beginning if the a is negative and then and then multiplying by negative one again at the end. And if you keep if you keep those little things in mind, uh, you should never ever ever uh, screw up a completing the square problem. And like I said, it is something it is something that you need to know how to do.